Welcome to John Gets Games. This is my variety vlog for August 2018, and as you can see, I have a bunch of different things I'll be covering, so feel free to skip ahead to the part that most interests you, or stick around for the whole thing. Let's go ahead and start things off with general updates for the channel, and as always, I'll do a quick Patreon campaign update. There were seven new people who added into the campaign over this last month, which is great to see, but unfortunately, there were more than seven who deleted their um, uh, support, and I totally understand that. Like pre uh, People's reasons fluctuate, but overall, it was a pretty large reduction. Overall, uh, it lost, the campaign in general lost $44, which is a bigger one than I've seen in a while, and I think this is an ongoing uh, ripple effect of me changing the channel up and not making reviews anymore, but I am hoping that uh, in the upcoming months uh, that can uh, kind of get turned around and start getting some positive months again. It would be really great to see that, but either way, I'm uh, very thankful for the seven new people who are supporting the channel this last month. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the other update for the channel, and that involves a studio upgrade. Now, from your perspective, hopefully nothing looks different. You know, the background's the same. Hopefully the audio and the overall visuals feel the same. But from my perspective, the studio that I sit in is significantly different. And that's because just off uh, camera, what I've done is uh, a sizable amount of audio um, uh, uh, upgrades for the studio. And the biggest thing is that for the last many months, there's been this large uh, folded cardboard contraption that went up about seven feet high. And into it, I pinned a bunch of sound absorbent panels. And this did a really good job of absorbing the echo that bounced around the room. But the problem is that on the other half of this um, studio room that I'm in is where I edit my videos. And this large cardboard thing didn't weigh much, and it seemed like every time I'd walk by it, it would fall down on top of me, and the pins would be sticking out, and it would hit me, and it was <laughs> very annoying. And overall, it just kind of made the room feel very cluttered and not the best space to be in. So um, I've been thinking about doing this for a while, and I finally uh, went about uh, changing my audio setup in here so that uh, I got rid of the cardboard, and I installed a new curtain in the middle of the room, just like the one that's back here. It's now in the middle of the room, and it's uh, twice as thick as this one. It's white, so it's nice and reflective. And then I took all those foam panels, and I stuck them to the walls around me and the ceiling above me. So overall, when I listen to uh, my recent videos over the last couple weeks versus the old ones, it sounds about the same. Like, I feel like I can convince myself that it sounds a little bit better now. But overall, it's great because this curtain is on a rail, so I can just scoot it off to the side, and now the studio is nice and wide and open and a much uh, nicer place to actually record in. And since I spend a lot of time <laughs> inside this room, uh, I am certainly happy with the upgrade overall. So yeah, that's going to wrap up the general updates for the channel. Okay, let's now move on to the next section, which is my upcoming schedule. Now, when I look forward to the next four weeks, it looks like uh, in the week that this uh, vlog is getting published, I am also planning on putting out a sponsored playthrough for Reatea. Now, this is one of the Essen releases for Quinted Games. Uh, they currently have a Kickstarter going for that right now, so that's one of the reasons I'm trying to get that video done before the Kickstarter actually ends so that people can watch it and decide if they want to um, actually back that game. Uh, the week after that, I'm planning on doing a sponsored uh, playthrough for Obsession which is a, uh, it looks like it's kind of like Downton Abbey, the Euro game, uh, where you are uh, trying to rehabilitate a old noble house in England and you're trying to do it better than your opponents around the table. It seems like there's some pretty cool ideas going on here. And so, yeah, the, in the week following that, uh, week uh, 35 of the year, uh, the first-ish week of September, I'm hoping to get a playthrough out for that one. And then, of course, the uh, a full playthrough for London 2nd Edition because that one won the voting from the Patreon backers. Um, that is going to be for August, and that should squeak in just there at the end of August. Um, the week after that, I'm going to be doing another one of these, uh, one, one of my impressions vlogs for all of the games that I've uh, played over this last month. And that's probably the only video I'll get out that week because it's going to be a crazy week for my other job that I am still doing uh, part-time there as well, and they're going to need most of that week, so I have to kind of prioritize that for a really big show I'm working. Uh, the week after that, so four weeks from now, I'm going to be doing a sponsored playthrough for Tiny Epic Mechs. That is the week that uh, the Tiny Epic Mechs Kickstarter is going to start off, so I'm planning on publishing that one right when the Kickstarter kicks off, and I might uh, end up doing another video that week. I'm honestly not sure at this point. Um, I have to see what the ramifications are of that really busy week the, uh, the week prior is going to have, so I'm not going to announce any other videos right there, but this is my uh, current plan for the next four weeks. All right, let's now move on to the next section, and that is going to be questions and answers. I only received one question over this last month, and that came from Anne Reynolds. And it's a pretty large question. I'll kind of uh, combine it down. And essentially, what she's saying is um, that uh, given that I use Board Game Geek to track my game collection and my plays, how do I count plays for expansions? Uh, do I just log a play of the expansion, or do I log a play of the expansion and the base game? Uh, well, 
There are several ways to do this. Obviously, that is one thing you could do is just uh, log both of them. But for me, since I'm really not much of an expansion player, I just don't log expansions at all. <laughs> Whenever I'm playing a game, even if it has uh, small expansions or big expansions uh, latched onto it, I just log it for the base game so that I know I played that game again. And that means that I guess my data is not perfect. It means that, you know, many years in the future, I can't look back and say, I played this specific expansion this specific number of times. But for me, it's enough to know that I played that given game and I can remember that, oh yeah, I think I played that expansion a couple times mixed in there. I just feel like, like I said, I'm just not much of an expansion person. And I've talked about this um, in vlogs um, in the past. Uh, I found that I have a bit of a cursed expansion uh, situation where whenever I get an expansion to a game, that game becomes cursed and I just never play it anymore. I don't know really why that is. It's like some sort of mental um, thing for me. Like when you add the expansion um, uh, complexities that most expansion brings in, it seems like I'm more often just going to want to play something else instead of having to refigure out how that expansion worked or teach the whole base game plus the expansion to whatever this is to a new player around the table. Um, now, this doesn't apply to all expansions, and there are a few games that I continue to get expansions for, but for the most part, I rarely play with expansions, so I don't really worry about my data being incomplete there. Uh, yeah, so that was the only question that I received this month. If you would like to, uh, like me to answer a question in a uh, following vlog over this next month, then please shoot one over to johngetsgames at gmail.com, and I will add it to the list. Okay, it's now time to go into the shifting shelf, and this is the segment where I discuss all of the new games that I acquired over this last month, and also all the games I have to remove from my collection in order to make room for the new stuff. Uh, the first game that I got is called Brothers. It was sent over to me by Ankama Games, and it is a very uh, light and quick two-player only asymmetric tile laying game where you're, uh, one person is laying straight tiles and the other person is laying angled tiles into a modular board, and whoever can put the most of their tiles down is going to win. I haven't tried this one just yet, but it looks like it's a cute filler style game. Uh, the next game that I got is Chivalry. This one came from Transit Games based out of Taiwan. Um, now this one looks like it has a bit of a rondelle in the middle of the, the table. It has some dice action uh, thing going on there and also um, a couple other things. I, I skimmed through the rules a couple weeks ago and I thought it was pretty interesting and I told them that they could uh, definitely send it over. It's possible I might do a playthrough for this one in the future, although that one's not uh, nailed down at all. Uh, next up, we have the uh, Founders of Gloomhaven. Uh, this was a Kickstarter fulfillment. I did a sponsored playthrough for that one last year, and I liked what I saw so much that I said, yeah, I'm just going to back the Kickstarter. So I did, and I got that copy, and I have not had a chance to play this one just yet. Um, so uh, hopefully I'll talk about that one and my impressions of that one once it actually sees the table, but it's uh, getting quite a bit of competition now from a bunch of other games. Um, the next game that I got is Obsession, and I already talked a little bit about this one in my upcoming schedule. I'm doing a sponsored play for the, through for this one in a couple weeks. Um, I got The Captain is Dead Lockdown, which is a standalone sequel expansion, I think, to The Captain is Dead. This one was sent over to me by AEG, and I don't know much about this game. Um, I, I, I did, they just showed up randomly on my doorstep one day, and I haven't even really read the blurb on the back just yet, but I think it's a cooperative game um, of uh, sci-fi endeavors. Um, I should uh, look into that one a little bit more at some point, I think. Um, I also got Tiny Epic Defenders and Tiny Epic Zombies, uh, and I think the Tiny Epic uh, Defenders expansion, Dark War, those all showed up from Gambling Games um, a couple weeks ago. Um, I haven't had a chance to play any of those in um, their actual final form. Of course, I did a playthrough for uh, Tiny Epic Zombies last year with the prototype components, um, and I'm curious to see what the actual final stuff looks like, but um, as of right now, those are still sitting in shrink on my shelf. I haven't actually opened those up just yet. And the last game that I got um, is also from AEG, and that is War Chest. This one showed up a few days ago, and it is a two or four player game. I think in four players, it's uh, two on two. And it looks like it is chess, the bag building game, where you are kind of moving pieces around in an abstract style, trying to take over positions on the board, but you can only summon pieces and move them based off of the tokens that you have in a bag. Um, it's got a wonderful magnetic clasp lid thing going on, and I haven't played this one just yet, but I am hoping to try this one out pretty soon because I am quite intrigued. Now, when it comes to games that I have removed from my collection, it looks like that is going to be seven games. Uh, the first one is Altiplano. Uh, this one was an Essen release last year. Uh, I picked that one up and I did a playthrough for it. It's kind of like Orleon 2, and it's by the same designer. And I liked it. I definitely enjoyed the stuff that was going on there. But um, a couple of my friends liked it a little bit more, and my shelf space is very limited. So I gifted that to a couple of my friends. So it's still around, so I still have a chance to play it. And I wouldn't mind playing it more in the future, but I'm not super excited to keep playing it, so I didn't mind getting rid of that one. 
Uh, next up, we have Council of Four. I did a playthrough and a review for that one a few months ago, and um, it was a neat, um, quick engine building game, but I felt like after playing it like five or so times, I kind of run through the course of what I'm interested in seeing out of it. I enjoyed the plays that I had, but I'm kind of done with it, so I don't mind getting rid of that one. Uh, the third one is Noria. I got this one last year at Essen, and I did a full playthrough for this one. I always meant to get around to doing a review, but I always felt like I needed to play it one more time before I actually got that review done, and I just never got around to playing it again. And I just, it started to feel like work, like, oh, I gotta get this Noria uh, game played to review it again. I just didn't really feel like playing it, and then it's just sat on my shelf, and I don't do reviews anymore. So if I'm not particularly excited to play it anymore, then I should probably remove it, and hopefully somebody else will really enjoy it. I definitely enjoyed my first couple plays of it, just... And it didn't seem to have much staying power for me. I think just a little bit too fiddly. Um, next up is Oaxaca. Uh, I talked about this one in my last impressions vlog. Um, it sounds like um, I played it at two player only and I was pretty disappointed in it. And from what I've heard as a response from that um, impressions vlog is that the two player game is probably not the way you're supposed to be playing it. It sounds like it's likely much better at three or four players. But I think overall, I just, I need to make cuts and I was not that impressed by the first play. So I think I would rather remove it and uh, make some room for other stuff in my collection. Um, we can move on to Outlive. Uh, this is a another game that I did a full playthrough for and a review for. Um, this one is a kind of a neat worker displacement uh, post-apocalyptic game. I enjoyed it. It had some pretty cool stuff going on there, but uh, much like Council of Four, uh, while I really enjoyed the plays that I had, after playing it several times, I don't really feel interested in getting it to the table much anymore, so I'm okay with uh, that one moving on to somebody else who can really enjoy it, at least for a few plays. Next up, it looks like we have Rajas of the Ganges, and this is another one that I picked up at Essen last year, and another one that I've done a full playthrough for and a review for. Um, this one is a worker placement game where you also have dice as resources that you roll and then you use them to do a variety of things like tiling, and ultimately it's a bit of a race game as you're trying to get money as well as prestige, and it had some really cool ideas and some very kind of dull ideas to me, and you can watch my review to see much more details about it. I don't think I've actually played this one since the review, and while I did have a decent time playing this one a couple times, it's just not something I'm particularly interested in playing anymore. And the last one I'm getting rid of is Vikings Gone Wild. Um, this one was sent over to me so that I could do a sponsored playthrough for it. It's a, um, a deck building game where you are building up a bunch of Vikings and a bunch of um, uh, elements as well, because with that playthrough I used the Masters of Elements expansion, and then you fight your opponents. And when you fight your opponents, you don't really do any take that style stuff. You don't hurt their engines at all, but it's the main way that you are um, building your engines in this game is you're just building a big fighty deck and then you are fighting other people and then you get a bunch of points and then it's a race to a certain threshold. And I never actually played this one with other people and I, I wouldn't mind playing it with other people, but at the same time, I'm not particularly excited to make that happen when I consider all of the other games that I have uh, showing up. So uh, for that one, I did the playthrough for it and I think that um, if you're interested in seeing how that one plays, then you should definitely check it out. Uh, but for me, I think I'm okay with not actually uh, having that one hit the table and maybe having somebody else enjoy playing it instead. So yeah, that's gonna wrap up all of the uh, shifting that happened to my shelf over this last month. And this means that we can now move into the largest section of the vlog and that one is the new game subscriptions. So I'm going to bring my laptop over for this one. And um, as always, what I'm talking about here is um, on Board Game Geek, you can click a subscribe button for any game you want to, and then you can look at your subscriptions to see new posts and updates for it. And these are all of the games that I've added to my subscription feed over this last month. Now, it looks like I've added 21 games, um, so I'm going to try to briefly run through these so you can see um, kind of why I added these in and why I might be particularly interested in them. So the first one, let me just get right up there, is going to be Altiplano the Traveler. Now, I talked uh, a little bit um, just a second ago, actually, that I'm removing Altiplano from my collection. I've gifted it to friends, um, and part of the reason I, I got rid of it is because it's a very, there's like almost nothing you do to your opponents in that game. It's very solitaire, which I am okay with, but it doesn't add as much tension as I'd like. And it looks like this expansion is going to add a little bit more interaction. There's a new location and it talks about um, the fact that you uh, planning your moves as you're moving your worker around the Altiplano area is much more important and there's new resources and just new stuff. And I subscribe to it because I'm curious to see how that one actually plays out. I wouldn't mind playing Altiplano with this one. Um, who knows? Maybe I'll pick it up at Essen and then gift it to my friends as well or something like that. But either way, um, it's cool to see that there's an expansion coming out to that one. 
I'm actually not 100% sure it's coming out at Essen, but um, it's coming out by uh, Renegade Games. Uh, the next one is Cerebus. Uh, this one is coming by, out by Le Bot de Jeu, which is a French publisher, and I don't speak French, so I apologize for that pronunciation. Um, but this one is a semi-cooperative hand management game where you are in the underworld and uh, the three-headed dog Cerebus is trying to, I guess, attack everybody. And it looks like the main mechanic for this game um, with hand management is you play cards down and you can either play a small effect that just helps yourself or you can play a really powerful effect that helps everybody. And I think that's where the semi-cooperativeness comes into play where, you know, if you use this powerful effect that really does good things for you, you're aiding all of the people around the table. And you don't win by yourself. Multiple people people can win, but um, people, there's not enough seats on the boat to get out of the underworld, so at least somebody will not win. But it sounds like if you are, like, locked out of the boat, then you can switch over, and now your victory condition is making sure that nobody else wins? I don't know, it might be a little bit too take that but I like that idea of play a small power to help yourself or a big power to help everybody. I'm curious to see more about that one. Uh, the next game is, uh, well, this is an expansion. It's Concordia Venus. Now, I mentioned earlier in the Q&A section that I um, I don't generally do expansions very much, but for some reason, um, Concordia is a game that I just consistently keep getting expansions for every time they come out. Um, this one it brings in a new board. I have lots of boards for Concordia already. Um, there's new personality cards, and then there's a teams version where you can play as two teams that play against each other. That sounds pretty cool. Like, I think that's probably going to be the big addition for this one. And since I think that Concordia is just a modern classic, I don't see myself ever getting rid of this game. That's part of the reason why I just find myself just collecting all of the new expansions because they're new maps. And even though I don't get Concordia played all that often, I think, um, you know, in 20 years from now, I might be just happy to have this stuff. So I am hoping to pick up this one. I don't know if it's coming out at Essen, but it wouldn't surprise me if it is. Uh, the next one is Counterfeiters. Uh, this one is being published by Quinted Games, and it's actually currently on Kickstarter. Uh, they're doing a Kickstarter for uh, Forense Second Edition, which I'm super excited about uh, because Forense is excellent. Um, this game, Counterfeiters, as well as Reateo, which I've talked a little bit about already. Um, this one, the reason I subscribe to it is because it's got um, some beautiful artwork. Uh, it's illustrated by Ian O'Toole, who does some great stuff. You have a bunch of anthropomorphized gangsters who are counterfeiting money and trying to get it out and switch that counterfeited money for real money, and it's a work placement game. Working Geek says it has a 35-minute playtime, so it sounds like it's a very fast worker placement game. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be something that I'd like that much. That almost seems too short, but I'm curious, so I subscribe to it to learn more about that one. Uh, next up, we have a Crown of Amara. Now, this one does not have a designer listed, and the publisher is Pegasus Spiel. Um, and they obviously, they're a large company. They do lots of solid Euro games. And I think, I don't actually remember why I clicked subscribe on this one. I was looking at the list, and I was like, there's no images, there's no designer. There's a pretty decent um, explanation, and it sounds like it's very Euro style, like the king is dying or something, and he has to choose a successor, and so you're all trying to be the successor. But um, the main thing it sounds like is going on here is the, me me the mechanisms, sorry, uh, say that you have action, movement programming, hand management, modular board, and pick up and deliver, but it sounds also like you are trying to score on multiple um, things, I think two different things, and your lower score on either of these is going to be your final score, and I like that kind of mechanic in games. And thematically, I guess you are trying to convince the citizens to vote for you or something like that, and they're going to vote for you if you build them housing because then they'll be happy for you. So, like I said, there are uh, there's no images on BoardGameGeek at all about this one. Um, there's no comments, there's no forum posts or anything, but I click subscribe so that I can learn more about that one. It says 2018 on it, so maybe it's going to be an SN release. I don't know. It could be good or it could just not be. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, next up, we have Cryptid. Uh, this one is coming out by Osprey Games. Um, the designers, I am not familiar with them, Hal Duncan and Ruth Vivers. Um, it looks like, ooh, it's um, illustrated by the artist Quan Chai Moria, who, well, if you are familiar with that name, then you'll probably be familiar with his art. It's very vibrant, um, really good looking stuff. And it looks like this is a uh, competitive deduction game. It says that it has a unique deduction game of honest misdirection as you are trying to fit, find this cryptid creature out on a map. Um, it looks 
pretty cool. Like, I like a deduction in general. A competitive deduction game sounds neat, and it sounds like this one is a game where you're forced to give clues to your opponents, but you try to not give too many clues so that they can um, figure out where exactly on the board this cryptid is, and then they go ahead and find it. I don't know much more than that, but I'm definitely intrigued at the idea of um, a competitive, honest misdirection kind of game. That, that sounds cool. I, I'd like to learn more about that one for sure. All right, the next one is going to be Discover's Lands Unknown. Uh, Discover, sorry. <laughs> this one is being published by Fantasy Flight Games, and it is the second of their unique games. It looks like it's one of the big things that they are pushing out of um, Gen Con is the idea that um, it's this new style of game where the box that you get is different than any other box that anybody else gets. And this one is, I guess, an exploration style game. Um, I don't know a ton about it. It sounds like there's a core thing that every box gets, but then like the, the scenario cards and the actions and all that kind of stuff is randomized and the ones that you get will be different from what somebody else has. And that's intriguing. It could really not work. And so I subscribe to that one to see, um, well, more to see uh, other people's impressions as, they start, as they've started to play this one. Um, I'm definitely going to keep an eye out because um, it could be interesting or it could just really not work. <laughs> I don't know yet. All right, uh, next up we have Gingerbread House. Uh, this one is being published by Lookout Games. Uh, the artist is Clemens Franz, who does, I think, art for all of Lookout Games games. Uh, it's a very classical style of, like, Agricola and many other games that I can't think of right now, but he's a popular artist. And in particular, the reason I clicked subscribe for this one is the designer is Phil Walker Harding. And this is uh, he's the designer of Baron Park, which I thought was a brilliant tiling game. It was a really fun uh, uh, experience as you're building out a little park. And it, it did tiling in a way that I liked, especially with the polyomino tiles as you kind of puzzle them together. And this one is a tiling game, but it looks like you are building up a three-dimensional gingerbread house as you're stacking domino-esque pieces on top of each other and then activating bonuses. I don't know much more about it. There's a couple images on BoardGameGeek, and it's enough to have me intrigued. I'm not sure if it's a big box style game or not, um, but the main mechanisms say pattern building, set collection, and tile placement. So yeah, I would definitely like to know more about this one. All right, uh, we can now move on to Junglil La. Jungle Law. Yeah, that one is a hard one to say. <laughs> this one is, um, I believe, being published by Tasty Mitchell Games, um, originally by Okazu Games. And one of the big reasons I clicked subscribe on this one is because it is designed by Hisashi Hayashi. Um, he has designed many very good games. Um, some of them are tiny, like Okidoki, and some of them are large, like Yokohama. And I have just a lot of respect for him as a designer. And so I'm curious to learn more about this one. There's a couple images on uh, Board Game Geek and a couple, there's at least one video from Gen Con, it looks like. Um, I think you are exploring through a jungle. You are trying to, I think you roll some dice and then you move along a trail of different cards that give you actions. Maybe you take the cards, maybe you don't. I don't know a whole lot more about it, but um, it's enough to have me intrigued. I definitely, I think, like to give this one a try. All right, we can now move on to the next game. Uh, this one is being published by Transit Games. Uh, they're the ones who uh, sent me that game, Chivalry. Um, this one is called Mathemagician, and I'm pretty sure I only clicked subscribe on this one because of that name. I just love that name, Mathemagician. Um, it looks like the description says, the tournament, uh, for the best Mathemagician is now initiated. Um, you have Mathemagics, it calls it, and it just looks really cute, uh, from a description perspective, because there is no box art, no designer, no artist, uh, no images at all. All we have is a small description, and the mechanisms say dice rolling, push your luck, Take that and variable player powers. So the take that has me a little bit worried. I don't generally like that. Uh, but like I said, I mostly clicked subscribe onto this one uh, because of the name Mathemagician. It looks like there's only three people subscribed to this game right now. So uh, that probably explains why there's very little information out there on, on this one. But hey, I'm looking forward to learning more. Maybe there is more to it than just a really fun name. Uh, next up, we've got Mercator. So this is not a new game. Uh, board Game Geek says it came out in 2010. Um, and while I was into modern board games in 2010, I was still a, a babe in the woods, so to speak. And I did not hear about this game at all. Um, it's an Uwe Rosenberg game. And it's not a worker placement style game. And you're not tending to flocks of sheep and you're not putting fences down. Instead, you are doing a bunch of trading of cubes and... The reason this one is uh, subscribed onto my list is because Slicker Drips did a playthrough for it, and I watched it because I was like, oh, I 
heard that name Mercator before, but um, I wanted to learn more, so I watched his playthrough, and I was like, wow, this game looks really interesting. It's got incentivization as you um, move around a little map. You go to a spot, you take all the resources there, but then that causes other connected locations to have resources get dropped down, and then you use these resources to do set collection for these contracts, but you don't get rid of the contract. You can just keep hitting that contract over and over again, but it allows you to upgrade and get better contracts that will let you get even better contracts, and you kind of cultivate a a face uh, up tableau of contracts of set collection. It looks like it just has a whole bunch of wacky stuff going on. And there's no news about a reprint or anything like that. I just figured I'd click subscribe so that if it does get a reprint, then I will find out about it because I'll be subscribed to the forums. Uh, because this one is one that I think I would really like to try. Uh, maybe I'll try to uh, track down a copy of it at Board Game Geek Con or something like that. But either way, uh, Mercator, um, it's an oldie, but maybe it's good. I don't know. It looks like uh, definitely my style of game. Uh, we can now move on to Naga Raja. Uh, this one is, uh, the artist is Vincent Dutrait. Uh, he does beautiful artwork in games. I know he did the uh, latest version of Robinson Crusoe, and that one looked really great. Um, this one is designed by Bruno Cathala and Theo Riviere. Uh, again, I really apologize about some of these pronunciations. Uh, but this one is a two-player only tile laying game, and I, I don't know a ton about it. I just watched a little video, and it looks like you are trying to build a connected set of paths through your own personal temple, and once you connect your entrance to various um, uh, treasures, then you can flip them over and you get points for them, and it's a race to flip over the most of these treasures. But the main mechanic of the game appears to be you have a hand of cards, and you kind of bid a certain number of cards and flip them over, and they tell you how many dice you get to roll, and it has these really wacky dice. They're like long sticks, and there's a variety of different types. And then you roll them, and then based on how you rolled, you your turn order is going to be changed around, and then the cards that you did not bid, you get, I guess you play those, and you spend the dice that you use to actually do different actions. It seems like it maybe has a bit of take that as you can affect your opponent's board, but it's again just a two-player game, so it's just a tit-for-tat type of thing as you're trying to work your way through your maze, and I'm just curious about that um, that card play mechanism and also the dice. They just, they look so funny. They're long little sticks, and there's a whole bunch of them, so I'd like to learn a little bit more about this one. Um, uh, definitely keep my eye on it, even though I don't generally play two-player games all that often. All right, uh, next up we have Pipeline. Uh, this one is being published by Capstone Games. Um, the artist is Ian O'Toole for this one. Um, I talked about him a little bit already. I think he does stunning artwork in games. Uh, and the designer is Ryan Courtney. And I think that might be a first-time designer. I'm going to check it up real quick here. It looks like, yeah, that's this is the only game that he has listed for it. And the biggest reason I clicked uh, subscribe on this one is because I saw an image of the board. And it looks really vibrant. Uh, from a uh, Euro perspective, it's got lots of colors and it's got lots of stuff going on. In particular, a pipeline of actual pipes uh, that you are, I guess, pushing oil through. I think this game is about uh, privatizing the oil industry, which isn't necessarily the um, happiest theme in the world, but you are trying to um, you know, be a business, trying to get um, your oil contracts going, but somehow you're going to be using this tiling as you actually push the oil through the pipes. And that's the biggest question I have about the game is what is going on there and how does that work? Because if this is just a game about, you know, uh, buying high, uh, buying low and selling high, then I'm not going to be particularly interested. But it says as mechanisms, root network building and tile placement. So if that's a major part of the game, then I'd definitely like to learn more because I'm a bit of a sucker for tile laying games, especially when those tiles make roots. I just love that kind of stuff. All right, next up we have Reyatea. Uh, I've talked about this one a couple times already in this vlog. Um, it's currently on Kickstarter. It's um, a, an Essen release for Quinted Games. And I'm actually doing a sponsored playthrough for this one, hopefully later in the week of this video, this vlog coming out. So I'm not going to talk too much about this one. Um, I clicked subscribe on this one before I found out I was going to be doing a sponsored playthrough. And it looks like it has the Puerto Rico style action system where when it's your turn, you choose an action, everybody gets to do it, but you do it better. But the main catch for this game is that once you do a couple rounds of that, you have this ceremony session where you are going to put these cards into a bag and you put a little clip on them to say, this is my card. And then you blind bid resources, you reveal them, and then however much you bid is going to affect turn order. But then all of those resources that were bid gets thrown into the bag. And then you try to and um, cast, I guess, these rituals or spells or whatever, and you do them in reverse order um, from the smallest to largest. So that means if you put a really expensive spell into that bag, it might not actually happen because there might not be enough stuff in that bag that everybody bids. So maybe you'll bid a ton of stuff to try and make it happen. 
I haven't actually played this one yet, and I'm hoping to soon. Um, I have my copy here. It's actually sitting right in front of me. Also a first-time designer in Jan Schmidt. Um, or Jan Schmidt. I don't actually know how that one's uh, pronounced either. Uh, next up, we have Railroad Inc., Blazing Red Edition, and the Deep Blue Edition. I'll talk about both of these at the same time. Uh, they are coming out by Horrible Games and I believe Simon Games. And this is a roll and write style game where you have um, these dice that show different tracks and you are drawing little tracks on this railroad board in front of yourself and you're trying to get points for connecting various spots along the board. But a big thing that happens here is that in the blue edition, it has a blue expansion where you can either have rivers or I think lakes. You choose one of those two things and it's an extra die that gets rolled and now you can add lakes or rivers to your area. And the red edition of the game has, you can add lava or meteors that come crashing down and affect the area that you're doing in front of you. And and I believe this is the type of uh, roll and write style game where you roll the dice and then everybody chooses from that die selection. Like there is no active player. Everybody's always taking their turns. Um, and I've heard good things about it already. And I like roll and write style games and I like drawing on whiteboards. So yeah, I'm curious to try this one out. Uh, we're getting down near the end of the list now. Uh, this next one is Ramen. Uh, the designers are Israel Sendero and Sheila Santos. Uh, and the publisher is... Ediciones Prima Genio. <laughs> I've not heard of any of those names or people before, but the reason I click subscribe on this one is because it has a pretty fun theme of, I guess, trying to sell ramen in a store. Uh, the mechanisms say auction bidding, hand management, set collection, and trick taking. And I'm not crazy about auction and I'm not crazy about trick taking, but it appears that this game has a, a lot of these things kind of working together in a strange way. There's not a lot of details online about it just yet, but I get kind of a high society vibe from it where you are trying to spend your cards in such a way to actually, um, you know, get the ramen that you need and like the cards that you bid and you win the tricks are going to be the cards that you can use for the next auction. And at the end of the game, the person who um, did the least amount of money gets the most tips or something like that. I don't know all of the details, but I'm curious to see more details about this one. Um, I enjoy small card games, especially card games that try to do a lot with a small amount of stuff. And this appears to be a small card game. Uh, it's listed as a 2018 release. So maybe this one will be coming out at Essen. All right, uh, next up we have Silk. Uh, this one is coming out from the publisher Devere, and the reason I clicked subscribe on this one is mostly because of the theme. Uh, you are um, silkworm uh, handlers, and it's a worker placement style game where you're trying to move your silkworms into really nice places so they can eat and be happy and then make lots of silk, and you are trying to also displace your opponents from those really nice spots. It says it has a 45 minute playtime. The artistic aesthetic of this game just looks cool. Um, I'm not, you know, crazy about worker placement games and short ones may or may not actually work out, but I click subscribe on this one so that I can see more images and maybe uh, read the rules for that one uh, when it comes out. Uh, looks like the rules are not out for this one just yet, but I don't know. When it comes to themes, that sounds kind of fun. Um, you are tending to silkworms, and so I'd like to learn more. All right, uh, next up we have Sovereign Skies. Uh, this one is being published by Deep Water Games, and the designer is Aaron Andrew Wilson. I think this is probably a first time... Yeah, this is the first, uh, the only game that's listed on Board Game Geek under his name. And the reason I clicked on this one uh, is because, uh, well, first of all, it has a beautiful cover. <laughs> I know that you shouldn't uh, judge a book by its cover, but it does look nice. And the description is pretty short. It says that on the edge of space, a system of colonized planets strives, strives to form a new democracy. You occupy the colonies and recruit politicians to gain influence and power for your faction in an epic Rondell strategy game. So the me me mechanisms say uh, you have Rondell, you have action programming, area control, and set collection. And it looks like um, I watched a little video that was uh, that came out from Gen Con, and you don't really have a map. The board is just a big Rondell, and it looks like you are moving your, um, your token around this Rondell, and you're kind of activating the spot that you land on, which is pretty typical for Rondells. But on that spot, you can also influence the location for a bit of area majority, and then each spot has different actions that can affect based off of the area majorities that you've done. And then you're also drawing cards, I think, from every location. I think when you land on a spot, you always draw a card from it, and each location has different types of cards. Again, there's not a ton of information. There's, a, like I said, a four-minute Gen Con preview um, that went over some of the lighter specifics of it, and I'm curious to learn more about this one. I'd love to read the rules on it because, I don't know, just something about it seems intriguing. I really like rondels as an action um, uh, style for games. I just, I'm a bit of a sucker for them. So, yeah, I definitely like to learn more about Sovereign Skies. 
All right, there are two more. <laughs> the next one is called The River. Uh, now, the biggest reason that I subscribe to this one is because it is the annual Days of Wonder game. Uh, they only put out one game a year, it seems like, and the art is usually great. I'm not sure, sure who the art, artist for this one is going to be. Um, the designers are Sebastian Pouchon and Ismail Perrin. I'm not familiar with either of those names, um, but there are some, looks like, oh wow, um, they've definitely designed quite a bit of stuff. It looks like um, uh, Sebastian uh, did a whole bunch of games like Corto, which I've heard of, and Helvetique, and three different pages. Wow, okay, so they're not first-time designers. Um, oh, it looks like the other guy is a first-time designer. Either way, <laughs> uh, I don't know a ton about this. I know there's a river that kind of flows throughout the board, and I believe you're going to be building um, buildings down onto that river, and it's a Euro game, and you're probably getting points for a variety of things. There's cute icons all over the place. And I guess I'm just kind of going off of the pedigree of Days of Wonder. Their games are usually quite good. Um, they're definitely um, worth paying attention to and learning more about. Um, and I think this one is gonna be a, an Essen release. So I would love to try that one out and maybe try to get a copy. I'm not sure. Uh, either way, something about it is quite compelling. Um, and yeah, in the middle of the table, if you look at um, Board Game Geek, there's a couple photos and there's just a big rectangular board and everybody's working on their own little river, which makes sense considering the game is called The River. Uh, but either way, uh, that is that one. And now we've reached the final game and that one is War Chest. Uh, I talked about this one a little bit already because I got a copy of this one. It was sent over to me by AEG. I subscribed to this one a few weeks ago um, after I saw uh, Paul Grogan did a playthrough video for this on his uh, YouTube channel, Gaming Rules. And it looks like, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the vlog, that it's um, kind of like chess, the bag building game. And now that I have a copy, I'm really curious to try that one out. Um, so yeah, I guess I don't necessarily need to subscribe to it anymore because I will get to play it and learn it. But uh, either way, that is all of the new game subscriptions that I clicked on for uh, this last month. Um, I hope you found um, some of that to be interesting. Um, I think at 21 games, that's about the amount that I did for the uh, previous month. And um, for the next couple months, as we get closer to Essen, and we learn more and more about the games that are getting released there, I imagine this list might get a little bit longer. Um, I'm not sure if I talked about this one too long, but either way, it's at the end of the vlog. So I guess anybody who got bored is probably not listening to this anymore. <laughs> okay, let's now go ahead and uh, finish out this vlog. Uh, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Um, like I said, I hope you enjoyed um, what the stuff I talked about. Um, at this moment, I have no questions to answer. So if you have something that you would like me to talk about, then shoot that over to johngetsgames at gmail.com. Um, also, um, I, it's worth noting that um, the, over the next few weeks, I'm trying to get four different playthrough videos out. And um, <laughs> this is the craziest time of the year for me, um, this and early December for my other job. So um, I'm probably going to be burning the candle at both ends to a certain extent, trying to make all of this stuff happen. I'm hoping I can stick to the schedule that I have listed. And uh, yeah, I hope that um, you potentially enjoy the, some of the playthroughs that I have coming out soon. So with that, I think I've come to the end of this one. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including all of these producer-level Patreon backers. If you too would like to directly support these videos, then please go to johngetsgames.com support to see a variety of ways with which you could do that. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the like button down below as well as the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.